Hello everybody and welcome back. It's me, your bestie who's a bestie, fully clothed and killing it, Vivian Frost. See, I told you I'd see you next Tuesday. Would be what I said if I remember to say it, to say see you next Tuesday at the end of the last season 13 recap. So yeah, this week, or yeah, this week, because this is once a week. I can't twice a week. One episode's this, one episode's top 10 best nights, so check out that channel. Give me a like, subscribe, all that fun shit, hun. Anyway. This week's episode, episode eight. Um, so yeah, this one was pretty controversial to me. Uh, anyway, cheers, by the way. Ah, I'm the smoothest Japanese whiskey. Anyway, that is meant to be flattering to me, not to mean Japanese whiskey, by the way. Let my slides show up. So yeah, so it's the Rusical episode for the season. Which means Snatch Game should be coming very soon, so I'm anticipating it to be the next episode because at least when I watch season or this episode, it didn't have a next time on RuPaul's Drag Race at the end, so I mean, they got enough. They need, it's, got, it's, it's got to be the next episode or the one after, for sure. But it's the Rusical, and look at our goddess of the season, the true queen of RuPaul's Drag Race season 13, Michelle Visage, in a lovely, shiny pussy butt blouse. Just need a little higher up there, sweetheart. But look at that hair. Look at this goddess. Oh my god, I just... As I clung to her thigh. That's a Rocky Horror reference for all you. Some Gen X? No. Gen Zers? Gen Zers? Whatever y'all... Gingers? Ha <laughs> No. Whatever y'all are fucking called. There's some fucking sideshow. So yeah, so the, the challenge is the Rusical. They divide all their roles up, all that kind of fun shit. And Denali... And Rosé kind of butt big heads about what role they want to play. And, of course, Rosé gets it because she's a fucking Glamazon. And so is Denali to me. Um, but, yeah, better singer. And justifiably fucking kills it. Not to say that thanks to a little pep talk from the lovely Annie Hathaway. Because if you're friends with her, you call her Annie. I read that in an online article that I'm pretty sure was fact-checked. Anyway, but Denali stepped it fucking up, and finally, as we'll get to, gets our critiques from the judges. Like, she always fucking wanted. So yeah, the Rusical, Rosé kills it, fucking knocks it out of the park. Um, this, I must say, and there's, there's the lovely Denali, and got Meg. Um, anyway. Uh, but yeah, they killed it. But as far as the Rusicals go, I was just so fucking bored, like, they st I'm like watching, they still like three people do a verse, and like, because first I was surprised they got to the musical so quickly in terms of like just the overall length of the episode. But then it's like, God damn, this is fucking long. I would rather listen to Bing Bang Bong, Ding Dang Dong, Sing Sing Song, whatever fucking order it is on Drag Race UK, but hun, uh, than watch this musical again. Just, I mean, not, that, not that the performances are bad. It just was not entertaining to me. Nothing like past musicals. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the worst, but it's the worst one I can fucking think of right at this fucking second. So there's that. Mama Roo comes down purse first, almost mirroring the runway from a couple weeks ago where they had the big fucking purses. Not quite that big. Well, Roo's just really big. Uh, I know she's fucking tall. But as always, ugh, again, we got two Michelle Visage looks this episode, and I am fucking living. Look at this. Look at this goddess. True Queen of Season 13. Mark my fucking words. Focus, Viv. Camera. Not me. Anyway, Tina Burner comes down. Runway thing was yellow. So she comes down, looked like a motherfucking taxi. And I gotta say, it's the best she's ever fucking looked on this stage. There was no fucking fire reference anywhere. Just a taxi. Big wig. Big headlights. Fucking killed it. Fucking killed it. I love this look. Uh, I wouldn't wear it, but she looked fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, then we have a lovely Olivia. Again, looks fantastic. There is a reveal for this, which was revealed in Untucked. So if you're not watching Untucked, hon, you're only getting half the story. Anyway, there is a reveal that she didn't do and didn't need to. I mean, very safe look. I wouldn't fucking wear it. It's not my style, but still a good look for her. Simone, Simone, amazing coat. Face is great. Didn't like. The, I didn't like the outfit. It was very reminiscent to me of almost what I expect her to do. But she was so unsuspecting. 
earlier in the season where it was just like, wow, 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 wow. And then it's just like, now it seems like we've plateaued. So I hope she didn't blow a wad of outfits in the first few episodes because she was maybe nervous and wanted to have the big impact. But now, I mean, she's, she's going, you know, this episode was a safe episode for her. Although, not, almost not quite. <laughs> uh, and then we have Utica, actually, I mean, very quite, I should say. Uh, spoiler alert. Anyway, we don't have Utica coming down. Typical Utica, very safe. Looks gorgeous, looks fantastic, but meh on the outfit. Uh, but typ again, typical Utica. Candy comes down, looks fantastic, don't get me wrong. Didn't like the outfit. I get the reference, just didn't, it didn't work. I don't think it worked. That's just my fucking opinion and I'm just a transvestite on YouTube. Uh, then we have Elliot, who's normally looks I like and I do like this outfit. I would wear it with something, you know, a higher neck latex underneath or something. Uh, so I do like the look. Uh, and like, you know, she's talking about how hers is better than Tina's. And, and t I guess in terms of technically, technicality, it's sh surely, sure. Uh, but I like Tina, if they were standing side by side, I'd rather wear Elliot's, but I, I don't know, Tina just owned it more. And Elliot, I've been cheering you on most of the season. I'm getting a little, you know, gotta step it up another, another level. Like my girl Denali in the challenge, the runway painted for the gods, amazing fucking headpiece. Uh, it's just the rest of it looked like a leotard. All the money was up here. It's like some sort of fashion mullet, you know? Like I said, the party's on the head and what it, business on the bottom, body. I don't, I don't fucking know these things. Uh, but anyway, you know, looks fantastic, don't get me wrong. This is good. This right here. This, not my cup of tea. And I get what she was going after. You know, but after she came down the, the runway in that fucking bird outfit, I was just like, okay, girl, keep it up, and, you know, it's, she's plateauing, it seems, in the, on the runway, uh, although elevating in the challenges, so the eternal question, runway challenge, where's the balance? Anyway, got Mick, uh, I don't think she did as good in the challenge as Rue said, because I do not fucking understand how anybody in this day and age cannot at least imitate how to fucking play a guitar. If you never pick up a fucking guitar, you know, you look like fucking Zach Morris on the guitar over here, just banging it, not fucking strumming it. I mean, you know, she was into it, don't get me wrong. But come on, learn, like, at least, you know, fake, you fake it till you make it. Living proof. Uh, but this runway, fucking loved it. Creepy, looks like something out of Return to Oz from the 80s. Totally, I would love to wear a latex suit like that. Uh, but this, this mug, not the crash test dummy. You know, well, just the dummy, not the crash test part. Because uh, you don't drink or drive, kids. Uh, but, yeah, you know, she was good. And aha, Rose be still my beating fucking heart in terms of his, her outfits. Just, I think she kills it every week on the runway. I fucking love the movie references because I can't remember how old she is, but every movie reference she like pops out, you know, big business, the mask is just like, fuck yes. And, you know, I think, you know, it is a little orangey in some light, but I think, because I know fucking satin and silk in different fucking light, or as the light changes, the shade can look darker, because look, there's some yellow, and look, then it looks orange in the shadow, dearie. So, Michelle, make sure you're wearing your right glasses. Um, to, but, you know, he definitely had, it, I'm not saying it was totally fucking yellow, but if a cab came down the street, I would just be like, oh, it's a cab. I wouldn't say, oh, that's a fucking orange cab, depending on the fucking lighting. So, anyway, Rosé, Rosé is the winner, rightfully fucking so. Fuck yes, Glamazon. Get that first repeater badge. Oh, wait, wrong season. And it ends up being Simone and Candy in the bottom. So I was ecstatic that we might be getting rid of Candy. Now, I'm not, uh, now I, again, I'm just fucking trying to say on YouTube, but I'm so fucking, I just don't, you know, in the challenge, it was bland. The runway was bland. And, you know, the whole thing that Tamisha was on her about, about that overconfidence, at least as, as portrayed on the show, not personally, because I don't fucking know her. Um, but the way she's portrayed on the show, it's just like, oh, come on, girl. Uh, but, of course, that's because I'm a fucking old-ass bitch. So you youngins probably have a different idea. So, well, that's all cool. Anyway, so it's Simone versus Candy Muse. And I'll be honest with you, I thought Candy won it. I thought she won the lip sync, based on how it was cut. Simone owned it, but it was very just like, fuck, I'm lip syncing, okay, whatever. As opposed to Candy, who was fucking living it. So, you know, gotta give her props for, I mean, I'll give props where they are. It's just as she's presented on the show, she's not my fucking favorite. She's my least favorite right now. 
uh, however, killed the lip sync. And then RuPaul, like when she says, you know, because it's always, when I mean, you watch it on TV, it's always, you know, she looks at one, she looks at the other. Dramatic pause, so and so, sachet you stay. So the second she says, Simone, you know that she's the one that wants. I'm like, yes, yes. And then Candy gave a beautiful little speech before walking off the stage, but then the shocking fucking moment of our fucking, of the fucking season. Uh, you know, Simone's safe, looking gorgeous, walks off. Candy, great speech, should be going through these earlier. But then Rue's like, oh, fucking wait, Candy. And the second she opened her goddamn mouth, it was like, double save. Which, the double save is like reserved for a Jujube Raven kind of moment. Or a, you know, Evie Oddly, Brooklyn Heights lip sync, where the lip sync is fucking amazing. This was not a good lip sync. This will never be on any best of lip syncs. It'll be on controversial moments. I was looking at this one. <laughs> I took a big hit of this new lemon fucking flavored stuff before I fucking started recording, so. Mouth's getting dry. Mine's getting high. You know how it fucking goes if you're in a legal state. Or if you're old enough and, you know, you're not distributing in those other states. Uh, anyway, Rue does a double save, and look at the reactions. This says it fucking all. Super excited because they're friends. Super excited because they're in the ball brigade. Michelle's like, what? Really? Denali, my girl, like, what? What the fuck? Tina's ecstatic because they're friends. And we're back at the beginning, so off you go, slideshow. So that's the episode. Fun episode. The Rusical sucked in terms of entertainment. Girls did great, not saying they sucked. Um, and then the lip sync was lackluster. The runways were safe for the most part, honestly, except Rose's is the one I'll remember because of the fucking mask. But anyway, Lip sync was, this was not a double save worthy moment. Like, you should have sent someone home, to be honest, based on how they show it on the show. Comment with the fire below me. That's where you comment, loves. Uh, and then let me find my fuck, because I always forget to open it up when I do these episodes. My little fucking tier list for. Oh, I didn't fucking save it. Shit. God damn it, y'all. I thought I, did I not save it? Did I not bookmark this bitch? Bookmarks. Sadian Frost. Oh, that, I know why it's not fucking working. Because I'm in a private browser. So sorry for the fucking delay when you're watching this on YouTube, but it's my fault for not getting it fucking up. Well, I mean, I fucked it up. I didn't have the fucking. Saved. There you are, you little bitch. Gotcha. Okay, let me get everything going here. Still recording. Thank you for sticking around. But anyway, the tier list for... Which fucking... Is it this one? There it is. Okay, yeah. Now where's the goddamn window? There it is. Okay, so this is where I had it last week. I had Utica, uh, Tina, and Elliot as, you know, the ones that I figured, you know, would be getting close. And we don't add anybody to the list this week. You know, say fucking Lala, goddammit. Like, whatever, Rue, you're the queen. I default to you. But, uh, yeah, so, sorry for the super close-up. Anyway, so yeah, that's where we had it last week. Now, after this episode, obviously, Rosé deserves to be there. Simone, you slipping. Candy. Let's see. Tina, I think you, you know, you're safe now. Utica, you're safe. You're still in the bottom. Not because I don't like you, but because of what, you know, you've, you got saved. So now you can't be in the bottom again. You can't. So you have to step that fucking pussy up. Uh, Simone, I want to put you down the safe, girl. Um, Olivia, Denali, still got to pick a top four right now. Shit. You know, as of what I've seen, and got milk, got mix consistent. So I guess I would stick with that for now. But Tina, I mean, Simone could hop back up with just one good week. Uh, need more on the runway. Take it to the runway. All that fun shit. So nobody gets to buy Felicia this episode, which is a bummer, period. Because I wish it was a good thing, but it's not. Because normally when that's a case, you should be happy because that means you just fucking witnessed an amazing goddamn lip sync. And that didn't fucking happen. So yeah, that's my fucking beef with that shit, Rue. 
Anyway, everybody, like, subscribe, all that fun shit. We'll leave the tier listed here. So that's what I'm predicting in the bottom next week. If you know, if you base it on like where they're at. But I mean, again, anything can happen. Falls from grace all the fucking time. That's why we love this fucking show and all the artistry and all that kind of shit. So anyway, don't forget. By now, you see my little face down here in focus, Viv. And then the storm's coming in here on the east of the Amazon section. Anyway, sorry, I'm fucking drunk and high. Let me get this done. Uh, here's a video that YouTube thinks you should fucking watch because you watch, watch this one, so it's probably a previous episode of this shit. But don't forget, I have another channel called Top 10 Best Night. Check it out, hun. It's really fucking dumb. And anyway, you know, uh, so, you know, subscribe here. Watch this video. Uh, like and leave a comment and ring my bell. Ring my bell. Yeah, that's how fucking drunk I fucking am. Okay, everybody. I will see you next Tuesday, and don't forget to stay fucking frosty.